JJ Barnes and this is Jonathan McKinney. Hello. And you are listening to Siren Stories the podcast. Now, usually on this feed we are doing the Marvel runs. Yeah. But there's a bit of a break now before Loki. So we finished um, Falcon and Winter Soldier last week and it's a bit of time till Loki. So we are filling our podcasting time with movie reviews. That's correct. So we have just watched A Promising Young Woman. Or Promising Young Woman. Oh, is it A? It's not A. I don't think it's oh, A, Promising Sorry, Young. my mistake. Uh, directed by Emerald Fennell. Yeah. Fennell. 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 Fennell? I don't know. I think, I think it's Fennell. And starring Kerry Mulligan. Is that who the star is? Yes. Okay. Written and directed, I believe, by... God, um, I have to check that now. Emerald Fennell. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm God, I'm having a complete, like, am I an absolute div? Let me just, right, just hang on one second. Podlovians. Because, um, yes, it's all right, it is, it's fine. God, proper worried then. <laughs> okay, so, yes, starring Kerry Mulligan. Good. We will be breaking this podcast into four sections, as per usual. The first yes. is a rundown of the plot, then it's what we liked, what we didn't like. We normally end up with thoughts and theories of what's to come, but for movie reviews, we do a what we would have done differently, because as you may or may not know, we're writers, we are screenwriters, we have directed a movie. Um, we like to sort of think how we would do a film ourselves. Like yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that the way it's done is bad or that our way is better, just our interpretation of that story, what we would have chosen to do differently. Yeah, so if we were given the plot, the premise, the... Yeah, exactly. The concept, for, like, in its entirety. What, what we, we would have, have done. Yeah. So, we will start with a rundown of the plot. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is going to be a bit of a tricky one. Why? Do you want to get drunk? I really do. I feel emotionally <laughs> drained, to be honest. Yeah. I honestly, I'm really... Drained is the only way I can describe my, my feelings right now. I feel like I need a really long sleep. So basically, Kerry Mulligan plays Cassie, whose friend in college, yeah, Nina, medical Fisher. school, Nina, she, on a night in a party, well, I mean, rather than trying to do an episode, like a sort of through the movie breakdown, I'll just explain the plot, because okay. I think there's too much to try and do a run through. Right. Um, she gets raped at a party. She's violently raped and abused, but while being watched and laughed at by the guy's friends, yep. Al, Al... Al Monroe. Al Monroe. Um, he rapes her. Uh, she's then disbelieved by the college, disbelieved by the police. The lawyer takes her apart. She then kills herself. That's right. And Cassie was her best friend from childhood. Believed her, trusted her, stood by her side, dropped out of college when Nina did, mm -hmm. um, and never went back, and is kind of on a, a vengeance mission... Uh, yeah, she's on a, in but, general. Yeah, but um, not just for the men who hurt Cassie. No, no. No, um, hurt Nina. So, okay, so she's sort of the rape revenge Batman. Yeah, right? exactly. So because you meet her at first, she's she's pretending can I, to... Can I, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, because Batman, his parents, in, you know, in certain movies you see who killed his parents. In the, the original story of the character, he never knew who killed his parents, mm -hmm. so he went out to fight crime. On a oh, right. Okay, yeah, I get the... Yeah, that totally makes that's sense. My, that's why I said... Yeah, um, no. I was just... I thought you meant just, like, sort of vengeance thing. But, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Without Absolutely. being able to get back at the person, yeah. Yeah. So she... Mm -hmm. uh, when you first meet her, she is pretending to be drunk in a club. She looks like she's really drunk. She's, you know, looking for a phone, got smudged makeup. Mm -hmm. She's not sort of particularly coherent. And Adam Brody, who... Yeah. He comes across in the club as the nice guy of the group yes. because his mates are more, leering over her. They are more overtly exactly. predatory. Yeah. They're sort of saying, oh, she's asking for it. Oh, she's really hot. Mm -hmm. And we're used to Adam Brody in movies. He's yeah. always the nice guy. He's He he plays the nice guy in movies. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's there being nice. So I'm going to go and help her. And she can't find her phone. So he offers a drive, like, to get her a ride home. Mm -hmm. Then in the taxi, he's like, come up to my apartment. Mm -hmm. And then in his apartment, he gives her a massive kumquat yeah. uh, liqueur yeah. and starts being really pushy mm -hmm. with her. 
she then snaps out of it, reveals she's in fact not drunk, and you don't actually see what happens next. No. He's pulled off her knickers, like he's going for it, like he's he being is, really, yeah. really bad. Yes. Um, like he has absolutely 100% not in any way redeemable <laughs> from these seeds. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. The, the, It doesn't leave you with any doubt. I tell you what, I was so uncomfortable watching it. I'll bet. I really, really did not enjoy many of the scenes to what uh, i didn't really enjoy the movie fair enough but we'll get to that that's uh, and not because it's not good but anyway mm -hmm. so then you see her doing it she's she she pretends to get drunk she takes guys like goes back to a guys apartments and basically punishes them yeah. like and she in seems varying to have a, ways yeah she seems to have a code of of punishment yeah the red pen versus so. the blue pen we never actually find out what those are well but there's a few things that are implied in this film that aren't explicitly stated like nobody yeah. says the word rape in this film do they no i don't believe anybody uses that word and i think she tries to get the, ju like jumping massively to the end she yeah tries to get the guy to, confess. to say the word i think and he never does but the she writes down their name in her little book and she tallies yeah. them up and she's been doing this a lot for yeah. a long time that yes. book is full yeah she's been at this every weekend i think she says yeah um and yeah so the first guy adam brody he because he goes for it when he thinks she's asleep it is implied that she murders him because she's got blood on her hands. Yeah, but um, I don't think she does because he was Jerry, wasn't he? Uh, was he? I yeah. Think, I think he was Jerry. And the, the and the black guy with the, with fedora. the fedora. He knows. So what did she do then? She well, exactly. She, she had blood on her. So I know. She did something. But then the second fellow. Because she, when he when she he wakes her up. He wakes her up. He wants exactly. to take advantage of her drunk, so she gives him a lecture. But yeah, she and scares physically him. Physically hurt him. Exactly. It's it's an interesting little code that it she is, has. It's a, it's a moral code she is by. So she <laughs> obviously she used to work in. Um, she she used to be in medical school. She was going to be a doctor. Yeah. She's now working in a coffee shop. Yes. And doesn't like it, but it keeps her going. She lives at home with her parents. Her mm -hmm. parents are chronically disappointed in the girl yep. who's supposed to be a doctor and is now. 30. It's, uh, Stifler's mom. Yeah. And, it's uh, Byron mom. Hadley from the Shawshank Redemption. And yeah, so she's working in this coffee shop just to have something to do, right? Well, between like between, vengeance yeah, yeah. missions. Well, she's got to pay for it. Well, no, she's not to pay for her drinks because yeah. she doesn't drink when she's out. Exactly. Uh, punishing yeah. rapists. Exactly. So, um, and then a guy who remembers her from medical school. And I want to say. No, I'm gonna look it up because I can't remember the actor's name. And I... Oh, he's um he's from Kickass, isn't he? He's he plays the the and Red Mist or whatever. Yeah, I just I want to remember his name because Bo Burnham. That's it. He's a a bit more like he, he, like both Adam Brody and and he have good nice guy personas. Yeah, yeah they're not like the pecs and the... They're, yeah, they're the sort of geeky, goofy, yeah, sweetheart Affable. guys. Yeah, and. He sort of he recognizes her from medical school, and we're going to get on to. Oh right, we're not talking about. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the uh, the the second guy she punishes. Oh no, not the coke um, addict guy. The coke addict. No, um, you're talking about right, the, Ryan. Ryan, Doctor Ryan, the main who guy. is like, as you said, I mean, you were right about him as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is a sweetheart. Yeah. Like he recognizes her from medical school. He's. He's got this real sort of goofy, sweet intro where he really screws it up and kind of accidentally yeah, yeah, insults yeah, yeah. her. But he he comes back like he's he has a great intro for a romantic lead. He's a romantic comedy character. Yeah, in a nutshell, it, yeah. he is. It is almost cliched. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is cliched. Yeah, I think it is deliberately. It, it, it's uh, satire. It, yeah, of the romantic comedy guy, yeah. and she falls for him like. He invites her up to his hotel after their date and she gets really upset because she's used to guys mm -hmm. doing that. But she realises that, you know, he wasn't being... Mm -hmm. And she goes and apologises and they start having this relationship. And he's a real sweetie. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, they have their Paris Hilton. Yeah, yeah. But that's after, that's isn't it? That's after a lot of stuff. So, yeah, yeah so they, they've been going out, but he, he's not been touching her. And he, they, you know, not doesn't kiss her, doesn't touch her, keeps his distance and respectful. Then she's out on a vengeance mission one night. Well, we before that, we've got to talk about um, Alison Bree's character. Oh, story. is that before? You see, I'm no yeah, good at doing yeah. it in order. So, yeah, she arranges to go day drinking with Alison Bree, who plays Madison. Yeah. A friend of hers from college, but they haven't spoken in years. And she basically, she gets champagne 
and puts it in her glass and puts um, like a, ginger like ale in drink. her own glass. Again, yeah. very Batman to pretend to be drinking. Yeah. But anyway. Um... <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, so she gets Madison absolutely wasted and then confronts her about Nina. And it turns out that when Nina had gone to Madison about the rape, about the party and the mm-hmm. incident, she said it was crying wolf, that no one would believe her because she slept around. And so... Yeah, and she was... She sort of victim blames. Yeah, hundred percent victim blames her, and she says like, "Oh, I hope you have learned." Yeah, and it's really interesting because when she like her punishment is obviously um, Cassie has these mates who mm-hmm. she trusts, but arranges to like make like, to make Madison think that, that she's been raped. She's been raped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. That was a. That was a, a sort of. Because it doesn't tell you at first no. that she's not having that happen. No, and I was thinking about this as we were going, because when it first happened, I was like, okay, because you're just re- sort of receiving the story at this yeah. point, and you're like, how dark is this mm. promising young woman? Although I think the promising young woman is probably Nina, right? Yeah. Um. So how dark is how, Yeah, is she actually arranging um, to have this woman vengeance rape? Like yeah. when she abducts the teenage girl. Well, that's the one, is because when it goes to the teenage girl... And she starts telling the dean of the college yeah. that she's taken her to the same room. You're like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, like it's not <laughs> um, that kid's fault. Yeah, well, it wasn't. And I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you do, because you don't know. It doesn't tell you straight away that no. that she didn't have um, Madison raped. Yeah. She does, it doesn't tell you straight away that that kid is safe. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, it totally sort of plays with the idea that she is indeed a sociopath and yeah. is... is you know, not just well. I mean, this this is something kind of sociopathic anyway. Oh, definitely about the revenge. But it's like the but, reveal that she hasn't killed Adam Brody. Yeah. It's very subtle. Yeah, it is. Jerry there is a lot says, of subtlety in this. Yeah, film. he says, "Oh, you're that psycho Jerry told me yeah. about." Like you see her write. You specifically see her write the name Jerry for a yeah, reason. Like, yeah. and then it. Yeah. It's really interesting. Well, yeah, it was when she tells the dean that. The daughter of the dean is sitting in the in the cafe, which yeah. they talked about, um, waiting for her favourite boy band to show up. That I started to then back fill the plot yeah. of what had happened to Madison. Yeah, um, and I thought the reason why we didn't see it's is because, because nothing happened to is her. She, yeah, she's paid and really trusted that that guy because she doesn't trust men. Exactly, that's um, what I mean. It's like the guy outside the doctors. He's like, "Do I go in now?" She says, "No." Lawyer. Yeah, the, oh, lawyers, the lawyer. Sorry, yeah. the lawyer. Yeah, I mean, we've got to talk about when she goes to see the lawyer. Oh my God, that scene. And he's sort of lost his mind. He's had a psychotic break at work. Yeah. Um, and which he thinks of as an epiphany about the way he's been, you know. There's so much in this film. As I think, I was trying to sort of go through yeah. the plot as it happens. And I can't because it's really dense. Well, well, I can sort of break it into its constituent parts, right? So you've got the beginning, which sort of establishes what she's doing. Yeah. She goes out every weekend. She finds a guy who takes advantage of her whilst drunk and then she either punishes them with physical violence or with a sort of very scary to them realization of what they are mm. right yeah. um when like she sort of throws it at the uh, the second guy the coke addict guy that now I'm sober you don't want to yeah exactly um, making him think about in the light of day what he's doing um do you know what i mean yeah 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 um, so he can't hide behind any of the bullshit that men hide behind yeah, when they take advantage of incredibly intoxicated women, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that's a big part of this whole film, really, is, like, your excuses are bullshit. Yeah. You know, when when he says, like, I was a kid, and she's like, I'm so sick of hearing that. And you know that it's her 30th birthday, right, at the start of the film. Yeah. She says it was seven years ago, which means they were 23. Yeah, they weren't children. They weren't kids at all. Like, no. 23-year-old men. They and were not, in medical school. Were, like, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. be in medical school if you're a kid. No, exactly. And even if they were 16-year-olds, it, it still isn't like, oh, that's fine then. Mm. Um, but it, well, it, it's worse when got... they're 23 and they're yeah. pretending that they were children. Yeah, um, 100%. Because that's, that's what men do when... Yes. Yeah. So... They infantilise themselves. Like, oh, I can't help it. I'm just a little baby here. She sees Dr. Ryan out on one of her vengeance nights when she's with Fedora again. Right. And, yeah, she gives Fedora, because he realises she's not drunk and she's crazy, and he's like, ugh, and she's like, yeah. remember, there's another woman out here who's using scissors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, so she's basically, 
I feel like the lectures she's giving these guys are to protect future women. Yeah, like, totally, yeah. Like, it's sort of scare them. Stop doing this. Yeah. It's kind of... Um... It's not sort of, I want you to be a better person, I don't think. Because I think she's like, I have she's no hope up for you. She's given people. up on them. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't think they deserve kindness. She doesn't think that they can learn and be better. She just thinks they can be scared out of hurting anyone else for yeah. fear of their own safety. Yeah. Not yeah. because, yeah. like, it's wrong. Not because it's wrong. I mean, again... Yeah, I think you're right. She's being practical about the best way to get them to stop doing it. So yeah. the next Nina doesn't exactly. have herself you know, taken by. Which is why it's really hard with Dr. Ryan. Like, she actually lets herself believe in him. And they mm. dance to Paris Hilton in the pharmacy. They do. And it's so obviously rom-com. Yeah. And it tries to let you think that they're going down the... I mean, you yeah. know you're not going to go down the I... aisle because yeah i i was very open minded when i was watching it like i didn't try to sort of think about where it was going yeah um i was just like i'm just going to be told a story um, you see i always try and think ahead <laughs> yeah i think i do with tv more cuz there are breaks yeah um, in between you know and you got time to stop and think but when the film's happening i just tend to get sucked in well i was um, i remember like literally when we were watching it saying to you like how is she not Thought about the fact that it could be that he could have been there. He's still mates with Al Monroe. He talks about seeing him. He talks about socializing. Says he sees him at work. Mm -hmm. They were all mates in college. They were in the same class. He remembers her and Nina. Yeah. And I'm like, how is she being so? Like, did you see it coming? Would be my question. No. Did you not? No. I mean, I maybe should have. I mean, I should have done. I if was, I was writing this story, yeah. Then yeah, was, of course I'd. I was watching the... it, and I'm like. When is it going to reveal this? <laughs> how is it going to reveal... I like right. how it revealed it. Um, Alison Brie coming to the house, mm -hmm. like, to find out that she wasn't raped is very relieved, but she's obviously really fucking angry about yeah. that setup. Yeah. Gives her the phone. Yeah. With the video on, and she's watching the video, and she's obviously upset, and then you hear his very distinct, yeah. slightly yeah. nasal... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's clearer than all the other voices. Yeah, so it suggests exactly. that he's holding the camera yeah, exactly. or the phone. Well, she says Joe filmed it. Schmidt. Ah, uh, right, right, Schmidt. <laughs> Not a surprise, because he's just a horrible he's fucking He's an awful man. human. He's hilarious when he runs away. I know. <laughs> he's got very distinct body language, that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, very I really, distinct. I do admire how the film was able to have such a light tone. I it's know. It's such a fucking dark concept. I agree. Um, men couldn't make this film. No. Um, it would be a disaster. I agree. Let me see. Where have we got up to? Well, we're, 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 we, we've kind of touched very briefly on a lot of the plot points. We need to we're talk about to, the scene with the lawyer. Because we've um, not talked about the scene with the lawyer yet. Do you want yet. to talk about it now? Yeah, because we haven't got to the climax of the movie yet. So okay. let's well, the, talk the about it The lawyer comes now. before Alison Brie Madison gives her the phone. Yeah. So a I mean, long like, time before. Yeah, we should go back um, to it. So she goes to see Dr. Octopus, where yep. he lives, and um, that's weird, isn't it? If you're a young woman and you're like, oh my God, I love this film, I'm going to listen to this podcast with these two. Who the um, hell is Dr. Octopus? <laughs> he played, um, <laughs> what's his name in real life? Um, um, how do I know? Alfred I, Molina. I just um, called him Doc Ock. <laughs> he played the character Dr. Octavius, uh, Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man Spider 2 with... Um, Tom, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. Um, he's also in Chocolat. As the kind of stuffy priest who then ends up eating a lot of chocolate. Oh, good he's thing. in loads of stuff. He's in loads he's of really Yeah, good. he is. He is in loads of stuff. But he's in this very posh house and he tells her he's on sabbatical. But he has a very sort of like, I he's, understand he's, why you're here. Yeah, he's intense. Like he's he's been waiting for his reckoning because she yeah. says, this is your reckoning. And, she, and he says, like, I've been waiting for that. Yeah, so and when, he, when she's there, he's very sort of like... You, are you going to hurt me? Like, it's fine. Yeah, like, well, he said, like, she says, do you want me to hurt you? And he says, I think I do, or I think maybe I do. Yeah. And you're like, well, okay, this is a, this is a scene. And he, like, <laughs> crouches down on the sofa next to her, because he's been telling her that he can't sleep, he's been yeah. awake for so long, because he keeps thinking, he says they've got people who go through the girls' yeah. social media, yeah. they used to go through their bins, yeah. and he's, he's in... He's in tr like tremendous distress, yeah, because of his conscience. And I was um, watching it, and I was thinking, like, what is she going to do? Because he's confessing yeah. everything. Yeah, she um, is out for vengeance for Nina. He remembers Nina's yeah. name, which is a, a difference because yeah, the dean doesn't. yeah, exactly. The woman, the, the teacher, the dean woman doesn't. Yeah. But when he crouches down next to her, and he sort of 
He doesn't ask her to forgive him. No. He doesn't ask for forgiveness at all. He says he'll never forgive himself. Yeah, and she says, and she I forgive you. she offers it like a response to that. I yeah. And, in, and then she says, you can sleep now. Yeah, you can go to and sleep. And like, he's crying in her lap. Yeah. And she's like stroking his hair. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it's an interesting character moment. Oh, it's, it's incredibly interesting. Like, because was, she's not just out for vengeance. And I think that he gives her hope that they can learn. I mm. think... He makes her think maybe they can be better because she does. I think she genuinely means that she forgives him. Oh, he yeah, he yeah, really yeah. is punishing himself and living through the distress of what he did. Yeah. I mean, she's clearly got the guy there to, I guess, kill him or to at least torture him or, or do something. To be physically violent in some way. That guy. That's is, a, that, yeah, that's not like a subtle. No, he's not going in there to chat. No. Um, he's going in there to, yeah, scare him. Like or pun, like yeah, physically or, punish or him. Kill him yeah. But it's it's really. I found her interesting because he was very intense and she got frightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was sort of like <gasps> she was a bit yeah physically startled yeah. because it kind of at the beginning well, he's jumpy. Yeah, like, he is. It plays with the idea that she is actually like Sydney Bristow. Like she is yeah, really yeah. fucking strong. Yeah. Like she has been training like she's yeah, badass yeah, yeah. it play and I, I thought maybe that mm -hmm. that was what was going to happen like she was really really strong but mm. she's not no she's not she's she's using psychological mm -hmm. punishments more than anything yeah, and, physical you know she has a little uh, crowbar yeah yeah she exactly. wants to smash a couple of headlights and um but you never see her actually hurt anyone no i mean she's got the, the blood on her wrist yeah it, i don't feel like it's hers but you don't but she, the guy isn't killed no you're right because he is Jerry. Yeah, and he, she's not strong enough to fight a man. You see this later. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, horribly. So maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was something. Maybe it was juice from the thing she was eating or something. She was eating a donut. It could have been jam. You know what I mean? Like they're playing with our minds. Right. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. <clears throat> she doesn't. She isn't strong enough to hurt someone. No. Or well, well, I mean, she's strong well, enough to hurt some people. Yeah, but, but not, not the guys not she's the guys going up against. She's going up against who are rule, yeah. strong and sober for the most part. I don't know one guy got high, but mm. she isn't Sydney Bristow. She's no. just No, that's she's a woman. Yeah. And not a, a trained assassin. Yeah, or exactly. A, you know, physical peak of blah blah blah. So she's got the phone. She goes to see Dr. Ryan. She's devastated. That scene where she's like leaning against the tree and it's so beautifully mm. shot. Oh my well. god. Yeah. Like we'll get onto that on what we like because <laughs> yeah. that I feel like I could go at length. So yeah, she goes to see Dr. Ryan and she says, Did you like she shows him basically the phone and yeah. the video and he's saying we were just kids and yeah. twenty three year old kids. Yeah, and she's like, Tell me where the bachelor party is. Because she's originally going to go to it, and she yeah. deletes the stuff. Like, yeah. she gets rid of it all, yeah. so she doesn't go. He's, and she's like, otherwise I'll send this yeah. round. Yeah. And so he tells her, but he's like, says, like, oh, so you send it round, so then we'd both be failures. And, like, he gets mm -hmm. real hostile to her. And I, I get it, because I don't think he's right. I'm not saying... No, I no, understand, no. But I get, You understand the character. I get the character, yeah. yeah. He's, he's... He's... Well, he's shitting himself. Yeah. Because his, his participation in something evil... Yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. Um, is is been videoed. And yeah. now he's an upstanding doctor. Yeah, and for him he's like, but children. I didn't he says like I didn't do it. I didn't no. do it. And it's like, yeah, but you you oh, it's really 23, 23. It's really the, frustrating. <laughs> why is it frustrating? Not the film, the film, the, the the that kind of man. His mentality. That that mentality makes me so cross because you can see what he's saying. He didn't rape her. Mm -hmm. like, but so for him, he's like, therefore, I don't deserve any kind of punishment. But I really like the way she's just completely, she just goes cold on him. She's like, yeah, well, I'm not going to try and explain this to you. There's no point. Yeah, yeah. There's no point. Yeah, he's not the lawyer. Yeah. Sort of falling onto his knees. Yeah, being like, he's hostile about it and excusing himself. Yeah. And you've seen that if he had... She would have responded differently. Yeah, I think it would have still been it for them. Oh yeah, they couldn't have had a relationship. Her, like, like she says to um, Al Munro, or I think she says it to Ryan. Actually, you don't know how much I've thought about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, like she's never gonna no, stay in love with him. With him after but knowing, you that know that she can. She could. She could have forgiven him. Yeah, she could have had a completely well, different end to that relationship. The difference ultimately is 
his mentality is childlike. Yeah. Because he excuses himself. I'm not saying he's a child. He's got no No, excuse. no, 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 he's, he's not. He's been enabled to, to think of himself as an infant, like boys will be boys. Yeah. And so he's run with that. But the lawyer, when she showed up, was ready. Yeah. He was living his life quite pe- quite peacefully. Like, he yeah. didn't think about it. Yeah, exactly. He was like, oh, I, he was drunk. You know, it doesn't count. Yeah. Um, she's dead. That's unfortunate. Yeah, exactly. He's built a narrative where he can function. And because of that, that's why yeah. she is not interested in any sort of... No. But as you say, it's really good they put the lawyer scene in because it shows that she isn't just a one-dimensional like rage machine like she's got a lot of empathy and yeah. very human because when she's not some... granny and jay <laughs> yeah yeah exactly when somebody is regretful and is living with their, cho- their decision and and sort of self-punishing because of mistakes and wrong choices and crimes they've committed in varying degrees of each kind do you know what i mean when they are actually a, aware of it, remember it, think of it, and want to make amends and live with the consequences in a negative way on themselves. She's very different towards them. And I think including that scene with the lawyer is so smart because it shows that. Mm. So when his response is so different, you're like, no, you yeah. you have got no redeeming, like, anything here. It's really good. Yeah. And, yeah, like, he's he is... He's... Literally just scared of losing his career, his life and his career. The so anyway, so because he's scared of losing his life and his career, he gives the bachelor party details. He gives the address to Cassie, who then goes to the cabin. Yeah, in the woods, parks a car a bit away with the keys hidden. Yeah, walks up and yeah, with the brightly coloured wig, mm-hmm. she gives them all like drugs laced vodka. Yep. And then takes the groom upstairs, yep. who's doing the good guy act, like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love my fiance, and, yeah. you know, I didn't want a stripper. And, yeah. Um, and you know what? Because she, she says to him, like, I don't get paid unless I take you upstairs. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, okay, I could see, mm-hmm. like, if I'm putting you in that position. Right. right? <laughs> Thank you. I could see if she says that to you. Right. And if you hadn't booked a strip, like if Stopker or Johnson had booked a stripper and a stripper mm-hmm. said that to you, I could <laughs> see you saying, okay, fine. But then he gets on the bed, he lets her handcuff him, she's taking off his shoes and he's all like, okay, okay. I'm like, the moment you got on that bed, you would have lost any. If you said to me, yes, I took, I went, I went upstairs with her because otherwise <laughs> she wouldn't get paid. But I swear, we just sat at opposite ends of the room and, you know... Then I'd be like, okay, um, fine. Okay, so I think... The moment you get on that bed, McKinney. I think you could argue <laughs> that you could challenge that idea. Like, you don't get paid unless I go upstairs. Like, why don't we just say that you went, up, that I went upstairs? Yes! Oh, my God, I'm so willing to bloody excuse you, even in my head. <laughs> God! <laughs> um, I'll pay you. He could have said, I'll pay you. Yeah, he could have said, I'll pay you. He's a doctor. He right, could have said, no, yeah. no, no, seriously, here's your money. No, you know, you're right. You're hundred percent right. I was like in my head, I'm like, if that was John, the moment he got on that bed, but you're uh-huh. right, the moment you went upstairs, the moment you sat on the chair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Take note, Stop Crew and Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Stop Crew and Johnson. <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> you pair of Schmitz. So she handcuffs him and he realizes who she is. And she well, she first says that her name is Nina Fisher and he then gets yeah, freaked out. Yeah, because he hasn't forgotten it. He name. hasn't forgotten, but he hasn't done any remorse or oh, anything. Oh, no, no, he's yeah, clearly but not he just remembers. Of it. And yeah, so she then is going to carve Nina mm-hmm. all over his body. Which is a great punishment. It's very inglorious bastards. Very, 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 very. And I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, this yeah. is the first time we'll have actually seen her hurt anyone. Yeah. So, but then he rips... Oh, it's horrible. It's it's fucking intensely terrible, isn't it? He rips free of the handcuff from one side. Yeah. And holds a pillow over her face until she dies. Yes. This is where I was contemplating pausing and getting alcohol because... <sighs> more for you because... Like, I was not okay. Yeah. Honestly, I feel... I, I've been sitting here <laughs> like, waiting to record this while you yeah. were just upstairs. And I've been sitting here like, I don't even know what to do mm-hmm. with myself. Yes. 
But yeah, so he kills her, like suffocate. And I was watching it like, no, she won't die because this is her movie. Well, okay, so what I was thinking is, and this is the only time I was thinking what's going to happen, and you're right, I was thinking the same thing. This is her movie, she's not going to die. Um, I thought Ryan will burst in. Yeah. Because he knew where they were. Exactly, that's exactly. I thought he'll go, he'll see her car go up there to the a cabin, you know what I mean? He'll drive past her car and he will come in and save the day. Mm -hmm. Like... This is better, I think. This is way better. Um, darker. Way darker. Horrible to watch. Yes. But it doesn't let anybody off the hook. No. So, especially so she, Schmidt. She dies, and he then sits next to her body, or as I say, right. and then Schmidt, and he's not Schmidt, he's Joe. He's Joe. And he's hilarious. Yes, yes he is. Like, awful. Yeah. He's like, oh, you killed the stripper. What is this, a 90s bachelor party? I know! Like... <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, then he's like, "It's not your fault. It's not your fault." Like, oh my god! And he's like, watch. "Thank you, thank you." Yeah, and he's like, "We just have okay. to get rid of the body." When, like, because the first time he says, "It's not your fault," it was an accident. And um, the the Al Monroe, he kind of he makes that kind of like, uh, "Well, no, it wasn't an accident." Yeah. And then like Schmidt straightens him out. I say Schmidt. Joe straightens him out. He's like, "No, listen, it was an accident, right?" And he sort of he's like, "Yeah, okay, okay, yeah." yeah. And he's like, "This is the official story." Like, obviously, in real life. My best friend, you suffocated this stripper because well, I don't know why you're a violent lunatic. Apparently, <laughs> but, that's fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I formally, know. it was an accident. And right? he's like, "We have to get the body out before the other guys wake yeah. up." So it's not even like they're going to try and tell the other guys that it was. It is between them. You have to buy into the <laughs> fact that this was an accident for your own sanity. Yeah. So buy into this because you can just excuse yourself then and forget about it. Yeah. Like. They take her out into the woods and burn her. They burn and he, like, her. he sees a hand hanging out and he like, yeah. sort of kicks it back yeah, in. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Jesus, it's grim. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then... You go to the wedding. Well, before we go to the wedding, we've got a little bit of um, sort of detective work going on. Yeah. So they ask her parents and the parents are like, well, she's also a bit crazy and a bit of a... You know, yeah, a bit flighty. Um, so they don't fear that she's dead. No, they just um, think she's missing. They then, go to see Dr. Ryan, who then doesn't tell them. Nope. Like, he covers, <coughs> even now, is covering his own ass. Yeah. Because if they if he says... Because he knows yeah. that she was going up there. And now he knows. That now he finds missing. out that she's missing. Which, he, there's no way he interprets that as anything other than... Al Monroe murdered her because she yeah. threatened to out him yeah. as a rapist, right? Hundred percent, and he's still the only and thing he he's interested in is covering his own himself, ass yeah. because that that video would come out if they were investigating a of murder. Course, yeah. So he's like, no, I'm not having. Any, like, no, no, yeah. And yeah. he's like, yeah, she might hurt herself. Like nobody, none of the none of the men involved learn anything, do they? No, apart from the, the lawyer. They get their comeuppance, but yeah, the lawyer does. But um, but he's already learned. Yeah, if you know what I mean, like. Because of her actions, none of them learn anything. No. They just get what's coming to them. Yeah. And so, okay, do you want to talk about the funeral then? The, 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 fucking, the wedding. The wedding. <laughs> fucking the wedding funeral. is my favourite scene in this entire Sure. Okay, film. yeah. So, you are my moral compass, he tells yeah. Anastasia. Anastasia. You are my moral compass, he says. Ugh. Um, and we see a, a very sort of new age bit of singing and dancing yeah uh, which is funny we get just about three seconds of it which is the perfect amount exactly of time <laughs> just to, to give it a sort of like quirky little yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you get a little bit of um schmidt's um joe's speech yeah. where he's like oh we've been through thick and thin we've yeah. been friends forever and you're like that's the same relationship that cassie had with nina yeah. like friends from childhood threw yeah. everything together but they're dead mm -hmm. <laughs> they are gone but these two are still here. Yeah. Being celebrated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Ryan starts getting text messages. And they are scheduled, scheduled te texts. You said scheduled. Did like an American. Is it not scheduled? I think we say scheduled. Do, Do they say scheduled? I think they say scheduled and we say scheduled. I thought we said schedule and they said schedule. I thought we said schedule and they said schedule. Because <laughs> schedule sounds weird to me, like a shed. Like a shed. A is shed of yules. Like, like yeah. What um, is a yule? To store in your shed. It's Christmas. It's where you put your Christmas tree. There you go. 11 months of the year. In the a yule shed. In the schedule. A yule shed. In the yule shed. Sorry about this. <laughs> Um, you wanted to listen to two people talk about a film you like. So we get scheduled text. 
And then you start hearing the police sirens, and yeah. the bride is so innocent, and she's still trying to pose and take photos with the cake. And, and the, the murderer, Rowe, yeah, the rapist murderer, is starting to look is... a bit worried. And then the police pull up, and then you see Schmidt doing his funny run away. Oh my god, with the arms, like with the arms. <laughs> <laughs> God bless the actor for he's, doing that run. He's a hundred percent like hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, and then they take Al Monroe away, and she's still getting the text messages, like scheduled texts. He's he, still she gets the, they're still coming, and yeah, it signs off from Cassie and Nina. Yeah, yeah, which is nice. Really nice. Um, she sends her a bracelet like she a necklace like she has. Yeah, to Laverne Cox. To Laverne who is Cox's G um Gail. Gail, who owns the coffee, coffee shop. shop. And she sends she... the phone and all the detail, which is obviously how they ended up getting the arrest. Yeah, because yeah. she says, if if I go missing, I have gone to this location. Yeah. So it was obviously the morning of the back of the wedding yeah. is when it was delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the lawyer gets to do something. He mm -hmm. gets to. You know, it's really nice that she sent it to yeah, him. Yeah, I agree. Because she's, she forgave him. She forgave him and then put her faith in him and, to do the thing yeah. that needed doing. And not just her trust in him, but allows him the opportunity to make it right. Yeah. She's kind of yeah. giving him his power back because he is... Well, he's a lawyer. He's Exactly. Yeah. He is able to then do the right like, thing. Because she could have sent it to anywhere. Mm. You know what I mean? And if he oh, yeah. hasn't had that reaction, she wouldn't have sent that to <laughs> yeah. him. Oh, um, to zip backwards a little bit, mm. right? Did you feel like the detective who goes to see Ryan was more than happy Yeah. to, to close the book? Yeah. Like, and, all right, doctor, thank you. Yeah. Like, good old, good old boys huh? yeah aren't we good yeah um, we're the serving society yeah <coughs> as in each other yeah because like the detective must be like i was expecting because again i've seen police shows and movies and the last person to see them alive mm -hmm. is a is Real... a is a big thing like and it's like oh so you broke up and now yeah, she's missing like detective booth wouldn't be like no booth. good for you Doc. booth would like, have been very suspicious he'd have known he'd have been like you know something and i'm yeah, gonna find out what it is um but booth is is also fictional no he's real. oh is he <laughs> good um he's doubly fictional because he's uh he's story then <laughs> he's in books but as a character that his yeah. character in tv is anyway this isn't about bones <laughs> um although in a way it is or ashes yeah um yeah then they go out they drive out and they find the ne the nina necklace in yeah. the ashes and yeah. yeah right so that's the end of the film that's it um she uh she wins in a way yeah Do you know what the film what this film reminds me of right what? um and it, you know i said like men couldn't make this film mm. And I mean, I mean that sort of very, very earnestly because the, I think when men do make this film, it's wild things. Have you seen that film? Yeah, it is. Um, there's, yes, there's yeah. There's false accusations of rape. There's yeah, lesbian sex. Lesbians kissing in the swimming pool. Yeah. Um, but you know, the girl wins in the end, and yeah. she's like, she's got her scheme and her plan. Yeah. But that's when men do it because it's going to be sexy, sexy and. Yeah, and even though this also, has sex and like stripper costumes and you know oh, what I mean, yeah, no, it's no, not it's... a sexy film. Like, yeah, she's in that little nurse's outfit. If a man had made this movie, she'd have like taken it off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or she'd have been smooching some woman in the yeah, swimming pool, right? Yeah, exactly. No, it didn't do that. It was, and they don't dress her like a sex object either. She's wearing like either sweaters and jeans or sort of floaty long yeah. dresses. Like she's not dressed like sexy like the character isn't designed as a sexy even when she's like dolled up in like a mini yeah, dress yeah, yeah. like they don't exploit her she's never well no because emerald Fennell. yeah exactly wouldn't i suppose yeah like... and i tell you right so we go into what we liked okay i also think really interesting because um when carrie mulligan was part was cast for this role so i think it was a book first wasn't it i didn't know that well, when she was cast <laughs> in the role, the reason I think it was a book first, and I would usually have watched a book, You'd have watched of, the book? read a book like yeah. before watching a movie, but I, I didn't, I, I wasn't at all familiar with mm. this. But people said that Kerry Mulligan couldn't possibly play Cassie. Right. They said she's too good girl, like she's got oh, headmistress really? vibes, and she's <laughs> too, yeah. They said that she couldn't be someone dangerous and edgy, and mm -hmm. no, she. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Like, brilliant. I. It's really interesting that that she has that 
was like people have that response to it because I'm yeah. not overly familiar with her I'm work. Not at all familiar. Um, with her. I know she's a really good actress, and I've I've sort of I've been aware of her as a really good actress and seen her in things, but I haven't sort of formed a massive opinion on her, other than that she's a good actress. But it was interesting that me people were actively saying that she shouldn't play this role, and she's brilliant in it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I can't believe that that people were, but I suppose you know there's always if the if the character existed before yeah. she was cast, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then people are always going to have an opinion because I didn't see that person in my head. This is an outrage. Yeah, yeah. Why doesn't exactly. the universe serve my head? Like, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought she was really good. So the thing I want to talk is stand out for me. The thing that I like is the visuals. Oh God, yeah. Right. Because yeah. honestly, what a beautiful film. Yeah. So. Some of the ones that I can think off the top of my head, I think mm. the when she's sitting in the restaurant with um, with, with Alison Brie Madison, Madison with and, the red light. Yeah, the there's ceiling. like an odd angle, like a looking up at, at yeah. Cassie. And yes, there's a red lampshade above her head and the rest of them are black. I don't know what the point of it is. I don't know. I, mean, look. I really liked that when um behind the doctor <coughs> The plants are dead. I mean, the, yeah, the lawyer. Yeah. The lawyer. Behind, I keep saying his, doctor. Yeah. Behind the lawyer, his plants are dead. Yeah. It's so... He's... It It reaffirms everything he says. Do you know what I mean? He is not, li like, looking after himself. No, and, he's not maintaining anything. No. he. It shows you that what he's saying is true because he's let this very expensive house mm. with these very beautifully and strategically placed plants to give a beautiful, opulent, sort of yeah. lush look have died. Yeah. He really, he's honest. Like, those plants tell you that what he's saying is the truth. Yeah, that's true. Like, the tree, when she's lying against the tree. Is that when the, 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 the song, like, there's a song playing and it's like yeah. the child's voice. Yeah. Um, the, mu the music's incredible. The music is incredible. Like, I, I was like, I want to look at the soundtrack mm -hmm. and find some of the song. I love that they use Paris Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know what's really interesting about that? Because, and what it says about my interpretation probably is more than necessarily what the film okay. meant. But Paris Hilton is, I would say, reputation-wise, mm -hmm. kind of artificial. Okay. Because she's sort of the plastic surgery, loads of makeup, the loads of money, sort of like a, like a Barbie doll created. Mm -hmm. Right. And they used that song as almost their love song, their song. Yes. And it sort of says yeah, that... Yeah, she's humming it later. When, yeah. fact, when she goes back home and Alison Brie is, is sitting there. outside her yeah. apartment, she's humming that Paris Hilton song. Yeah. And they have that, yeah, sort of goofy dancing, mm. flirting scene in the, in the pharmacy to it. And the song, I mean, I don't know if it's true, but apparently is very... She doesn't really sing that well. It's very manufactured singing all singing is edited now. oh no i know i mean but apparently you know there's varying degrees of, sure, of yeah. how much it's edited but, but the yeah. reputation i mean oh no i'm not i'm just sort of saying yeah, yeah, yeah. like if the reputation for the performer and the, the the singing and the song and the and the person is is fake is fake exactly right. I just think that's a real because they could have chosen any song and got music budget. You know what I mean? Well, they had Spice they Girls incorporated and stuff, like. Toxic into the score. Yeah, I love the use of Toxic <laughs> in the score. Like, you know what I mean? They're using also singers that are probably quite popular while she was at yeah, university. That, yeah. Like, they're older songs, but still, yeah. yeah, popular songs. So it's just interesting. I thought the music was really interesting in this. I thought the filming of it was stunning. I thought the camera work was beautiful. I agree. Emerald Fennell deserves like, attention, doesn't she? God, so I didn't so know much. anything about it, but I know she won Best Screenplay, I think, yeah. for this. Um, and she's a fantastic director. Yeah. This was a beautiful film. Like, if you take, even if you sort of take out my stress and discomfort of watching it, yeah. Um, it's an absolutely stunning film. It's so artistic, but not in an intrusive way, because sometimes you'll find that yeah. films are very artistically well, shot. the last film we talked about was Zack Snyder's Justice yes. League. God, yes. That is an, also a beautiful-looking film and but very artistic. But the Emerald Fennell... Keeps the story moving. Yeah, she was showing the plants behind Alfred Molina were dead while he was talking about 
his uh, response to his yeah, he, there wasn't life like a close up on evil. the plant in silence or with some <laughs> moody music. Like it was the artistry <clears throat> didn't intrude upon the story; it was incorporated into it, yeah. and it's absolutely yeah, perfectly right. done. Craft wise, as a yeah. filmmaker, she's clearly she's phenomenal. An extraordinary talent I didn't know anything about. Yeah, and I will want to watch more of her work <laughs> because if she's making this sort of incredibly beautiful and stunning and interesting and striking film, yeah. then I want to watch more of her work because bloody hell, she's brilliant. Yeah. So. It's a challenging one, isn't it? As a what filmmaker. What didn't you like? What didn't I like? Um, okay, so I think the film needed this. But I like interesting characters, mm. um, and the the lawyer to me was fascinating. Favorite character in um, the whole thing. Yeah, because of how interesting he is. Like Very, the, the performance of him, the weird yeah, t- twitching, sudden yeah. sharp movements that yeah. were scaring her. Because he's only in well that one scene, and then a little and then bit later, a tiny bit when he opens um, the letter. Yeah, but he's obviously done a lot. He's done a lot of thinking about the character. This part is obviously about what I didn't like. Uh, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to compare that to the Bachelors at the bachelor party because or rather it's it's al monroe specifically mm. um, i think he needs to be exactly what he is in the film i agree as in he has created a persona when he's in trouble that he can't be to blame because he's just a little boy mm. in in you know he's scared and i think he needs to be that but it's also there was no texture beyond yeah he's an infant in a grown man's body and that isn't excusing him and like justifying his um, no, no, his no. narrative of I was a kid because he's he's allowed to be a child. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the fucking dean of the the, the what do you call it? University. The dean of her university knew about this. Yeah, and excused it because he's a powerful young man, not a promising young woman, right? Mm. So he gets to do that, and so I understand the choice, but also it's frustrating. It's it's not even that it's frustrating; it's just a little bit flat in terms of his psychology. There's not a lot to him. Yeah. Um, and again, it's what he needs to be. Yeah, but... I agree, but I agree. It would have <laughs> possibly been more interesting to have a slightly different... Like, any sense of thought in his head beyond... I agree. Like, you know, just maintaining his reputation and, and being this most shallow of all human beings. Yeah. Um, he, is, he is going to prison as a rapist and a murderer, which is yeah. a good thing that he has been caught, thanks to the good Batmaning of, oh, of um, Cassie. Cassie. But yeah, no, I think that, that I don't even think if I was in, like, because obviously if I was there, I wouldn't be like, oh, by the way, Emerald Fennell, you're clearly something of a genius yeah. and, <laughs> and I'm not. So do you want to change your story according no, to I my agree. notes? I think that but, if they had given him slightly two-dimensional character rather yeah. than just, it might have made it more interesting, but... I agree. You you need. He is basically He's, representative yes. of the attitude of boys will be boys. Yeah, exactly. And the way society is set up to excuse it, and he is just the poster yeah. child yeah. for it. So I think it should have been the way it was. Yes, that's what it I'm might, saying. Yeah, it might have been more interesting. Character-wise, if he exactly. wasn't, but the fact he's then the statement is diminished. Yeah, exactly. So. And having the guy come in and rescue him and be like, "We'll we'll hide it. Like it will cover it up." Like he. Well, it, it speaks to another thing as well, which is that if Ryan had shown up and saved her, yeah, it would have again. It would have let Ryan off. Yeah, I agree. And he and doesn't. No, and because he's not bothered. Because he's not the good character that he like. Like she says, like, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm like, like, people say, like, she says, like, you, you'd be surprised how often it's the gentlemen yeah. who are the worst. And it's true because like all these guys have been all the way through it, saying, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. And yeah, it is. It's a really interesting the use of that El Monroe character. He's kind of built up in your head as this big bad as baddie. A, yeah, exactly. Like a, um, like a, a monster because yeah. he's he's done this and he's been covering it up and they've all let him get away with it. He's a doctor and he's this 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 and you actually meet him and he's pathetic. Yeah, I mean not pathetic enough not to kill, but I mean pathetic in his character. Yeah. He's. We. He, he's he's you know he he murders her. He wrestles yeah. himself free from. He's not, yeah, not weak physically. Weak, yeah, yeah, he is yeah. weak he's mentally. Mentally and emotionally. Exactly. He's and he's five years old. He's pathetic and needs rescuing. And he's such a pathetic human. Yeah. 
um, that I I agree what you're saying. Like it would have been interesting to have somebody a bit more on a level. Like yeah, someone a bit I more agree. on a level would have been interesting conflict wise. Yeah, but, but, but I, as a statement about story, boys will be boys, this this is how you make yeah. that statement. I agree and, completely. Um, the other thing I didn't like was I found the music too loud at points. Especially in the beginning. The very beginning. I, too, couldn't, I couldn't work out. Yeah. yeah. And it was just occasionally through it, the music was too loud and I couldn't yeah. work out what they were saying. Yeah. But other than that. So yeah, sound people on Traumas and Young Woman. Yeah. Sort your house out, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jonathan McKinney, before we finish this podcast. Right. What would you have done differently um, if you had been given this? And I know you're okay. like, "Oh, men shouldn't make this film." So right. what would we like? If we were doing it together. Okay, so first of all, it's a little hypocritical of me to say that because the fundamental Miri Minene, which is a novel that I wrote, is sort of my version of this. Yeah, it is. Um, which to I'm not going to go into any details, but um, I, I, I lost a friend. For the same reason that she Cassie Nina. did, right? Yeah. So I wasn't as close as they were. No, but, no, not someone who'd like grown up with childhood and like. No, like, um, still. But, um, and so I went on this sort of listening to women uh, mission <laughs> when I was in my early twenties, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of women told me a lot of harrowing things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I sort of I fell into this rabbit hole of trying to explore what the world does to women, right? Mm-hmm. And I read a book about sex trafficking and I had this sort of very intense sorrow mm. for, um, yeah, women being oppressed, right? Mm. But I'm not trying to sort of strut around saying I'm a nice guy, I'm a male feminist or anything like that. But I did write a book where there was a woman who was avenging the oppression of women, yeah, much more brutally than Cassie does in this, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's in a fantasy world. Yeah, um, she's like two and a half thousand years old, um, <laughs> and so I have written my uh, film, if you like, but it's a novel. Um, but it's not sexually exploitative of the. No, but again, it's a novel. Yeah. Also, so... I kind of confer with you a lot. Yeah. Um, about how to sort of speak through female characters. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to do a bad job No, no, no. Of and, and the thing is, like, I think, because I wondered this, you're sort of saying, like, Guan Yin Che is obviously more brutal. And I was trying to work out in my head if, mm. I, if I'd written this or made this right. film, would I have made Cassie more brutal? Would yes. I have made a, a Sydney Bristow yeah. on a vengeance mission? And I think I'd have been tempted to because, for one thing, I love a sort of super-powered woman. Of course. Um, and I love seeing in story real comeuppance for crime against women. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. So well, you, you, you were sort of punching the air when the text started going around and the yeah. police started to show yeah. up. Yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> fucking have it. Um, so I wondered if I would have done it differently and yeah, made her have killed Adam Brody. Made her have done that. And I'm like... To be honest, I wouldn't, even if I had done, I think I would change it because the sort of the whole thing about this is the way men will exploit women, female bodies, mm-hmm. for sex. And if she'd murdered them, it would have been a worse crime than if I, because Adam Brody didn't rape her. Right. He would have done. Yes, he definitely hundred percent would have done. But he hadn't. And I don't believe morally myself, mm-hmm. I don't believe in punishments for crimes that didn't happen. Right. You know, like in um uh, that film with Tom Cruise. Minority Report. Minority yeah. Report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're saying they punish crimes before they happen, which means you don't give the person the opportunity to not do it. Right. And you cannot be in his head. He should be punished for what he did do, but he shouldn't be punished for something he might not have done. Because the he might... I mean, there, it's it's fair to say that there is no indication whatsoever that he was going to have a moral epiphany himself. No, none at all. And I don't think it's... in any way that he is a redeemable character, but I'm, my own personal moral code, yeah. I would have rooted for her less... <clears throat> 
because I don't believe in punishment for crimes that haven't happened. Right. I mean, for me, once I once I began, I became under the impression that she had orchestrated like a drunk rape of a Madison. Mm. I um I was like, okay, I, this is a different story to what I thought it was. Yeah. We're, but then we're it turns out she wasn't dark. Yeah. Like characters, not not. And that's the thing. I feel like you have the potential to do the to, to drop the teenage girl off with the college boys, yeah. to arrange the rape of the drunk woman, to kill these guys, and you can see why. You can see the thought process. You can see the logic, but she doesn't do that because she is still she's still morally on the right side of those choices. She doesn't do the thing that she is avenging. She's avenging the death of someone. She's avenging the rape of someone. If she's out there causing death and rape, she's on the wrong side of those things. Right, yeah. So, as I say, my own morals would be, however much I am enjoying the film and the mm -hmm. character, I would stop rooting for her because, personally, I don't... Even in the case of someone who is clearly on the path towards raping a woman yeah. and should 100% be punished for that crime, mm -hmm. no doubt, I don't think killing somebody for something they haven't done Fair enough, is yeah. morally justifiable. So I really very much enjoy the fact that she isn't Superwoman. Right. She is... she is a, she, And also she's putting herself in dangerous situations because oh, she's yeah. not able to fight someone off. Yeah. She is depending on her mind. But the fact that she is still you know, physiologically weak compared to her male counterparts, mm -hmm. which is obviously so much of the problem with yeah. this world that women are physically weaker for the most part. I know not always, but of course, yeah. for the most part, physically weaker than a male of the same age and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All things being equal. All things being equal. Yeah. The woman is more likely to be physically weak, which makes her choices even braver and more frightening. And kind of crazier because mm. she's terrified of ha what happening to her what happened to Nina because obviously she is because she's seen the absolute devastation that that has caused and she's still t making that choice yeah I just I find I find all of the choices I say in my head I was like would I have made her super strong would I have had her training up mm -hmm. instead of sitting around at the cafe reading books and it's like no because she's still representative of an actual female experience which is why she ends up dead yes yeah, that's what the film states. Yeah. yeah. If she was, like, equal physically to her male mm -hmm. counterpart, she wouldn't have ended up dead. Yeah, that's right. So it it's... Yeah, I think the choices were all right. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I've, got a, I've got a big sort of self-awareness problem with talking about what I would change about this movie. Of course. Um, so I wouldn't be like, oh, here are my notes... Do what I say. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I'm not. But no, I mean, I get what you're saying. I, mean, yeah. I suppose what I'm, what I can say is in in the book that I wrote. The, uh, the what that it's it's a similar concept, really. Is like varying degrees of violent revenge for men who are um, rapey, rapey. Ultimately, yeah. And it's really it's about Miri, who was you know this is a fantasy world that we write in. So in the fantasy world that we write in. Miri is a young woman who was trafficked and when she was rescued by this very ancient 2,500 year old sort of warrior woman, um, she was then trained by her mm. to be an incredibly good fighter and she could yeah. pretty much beat up anybody. The way that I introduce Miri in the first book that she's in is I do the thing, it's the bigger fish thing, so I have like the, the bad guys are all talking about how you know, the, their strongest guy yeah. is like a boxing champion. He's never been beaten. And she takes him out in like five seconds. So yeah. the point was, look how strong she is that she can. You yeah. know. But I know that there's a history of men writing women and they're super strong and blah, blah, blah. I get no, it. but the point is, it's a different um, story. It's a different story. But this and, story, um, yeah, I so, think it is correct that she is, is the correct choice. It's, it's right for her to be more representative of average woman. Yeah, I agree. Um, Miri is not meant to be an average woman. No, for one thing, she's in the Shield mates. Like they, they're they aren't. Superheroes, they're all yeah. superheroes. So you couldn't have had suddenly. You couldn't have had her not no. be up to the level of the people she's in, no. a, in, in the team with. But Cassie isn't a superhero. She is just an average woman. Mm -hmm. She's you know obviously very slim and fit and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So she's sort of you know she's not like 
the average woman. Right. But, <laughs> yeah, but she's not a superhero. She's not, she's not she's physically strong. a woman strong, who you she's... might see in the street yeah. any given day. Exactly. Um, who, yeah, all things being equal, will be murdered by Al Munro if he... And the thing is, Al Munro isn't... It. A super fit, smart no, he's not. warrior he's got man. One arm, like one yeah, wrist, yeah, exactly. Handcuffed. He's handcuffed. He's not particularly fit and strong. He has had a drink. Yeah, he's been drinking. Like yeah. he is not. It's 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 a very clear message that yeah that men who are not super strong warrior men will still out physical yeah I know out, what you mean. physically no. outmatch yes a woman who. And that is the statement of how dangerous it is for women. As a woman, yeah. yeah. So, did you enjoy this film, John? I did enjoy the film. The um, I was aware that it was. It was. Was very... my body language conveying my distress? <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I realised at one point when I was almost in the fetal position, I'm sort of <laughs> like, I was like, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did enjoy it. I thought that the, the way that the film gave you the information that allowed you to interact with what is she doing mm. was was expertly done. Yeah. It is beautiful, like you say. Stunning. The the dialogue is very strong. It's not the strongest part of the no, film. No, I agree. It's not um, the strongest part of the film, but it's it's not like it's bad dialogue. No, it's it's very, very good yeah. dialogue. But the um, the visuals and the story I think are stronger. Yeah. And also what it says, because mm. I'm not really a fan of preachy films, but this, I think, is... Well, I, I be, there's no good way to talk about it. I think that it's... I would want any sort of 16-year-old boy to watch it and think real fucking hard mm -hmm. about why it exists, why the if film you exists. Watch, I bet you the number of men who watch this film and... The, there'll feel... be men who feel like Ryan when she shows him the video. There'll be men who are like, oh, fuck me. Mm. I don't like the sound of this. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, honestly, I Cause... have known these men. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm a 35-year-old woman who's mm -hmm. dated and been drunk around people. Of course I know these men. I've yeah. been around these men. I've suffered for knowing these men. Mm -hmm. And she's completely right when she's sort of... Emerald Fennell, I mean, showing you that they think they're good guys. Yeah, nice guys. They don't think that they are rapey monsters. They don't think that. No, no, they don't. Because they haven't like dragged you off an out of an out of an alley and exactly. held a knife to your throat. So they don't see themselves in the same category. And also, the, the in the instance of this film, there was a bunch of them there. Yeah, nobody said. Stop. Exactly. So they all allowed each other. Yeah, they do. It's enabling one another to be the worst version of themselves and then excusing it and covering it up. Yeah. I mean, obviously in an extreme way in this film, but it's sort of... But there was there was a lawsuit about this. Yeah. Like, there was, like, obviously uh, Nina wanted to press charges. Yeah. And but lost. again, that feeds into the rape statistics of crime of, course, of yeah. rapes reported right, versus so rape, rapes being convicted. You see the, it, the graphic, and there's like yeah, a little tiny corner in the top, which yeah, is like the ones who get prosecuted, exactly, or the ones who get like um, found guilty. Yeah, exactly, and it's yeah, it's. I think everything this film tells you about our culture and about the exploitation of women. Mm. Everything in it is done expertly and yeah. brilliantly, and it completely conveys a really important message. But whether I enjoyed it or not is a different question because it's it's hard. It's horrible to watch. I mean, the it's, subject matter is is difficult. Like yeah, and the the scenes are horrible. Unpleasant, so really, really difficult to watch and touch. Obviously, something personal. You know, in yeah. both of us in different ways. You for your friend yeah. and me for, like, me. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could emotionally cope with watching it again. I don't know if I could in good, like, faith recommend it to anyone to watch. Well, because with a warning, right? I mean, that's what the My mum kids... wanted to watch it. She said, right. like, she said to me the other day, oh, have you seen about this film? Promising, like, it looks really good. And I was like, oh, we're going to watch it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll report back. I can't tell my mum to watch this. I, I can't. I, I, I can tell her that it's really good and I can tell her that it's worth watching and I can tell her 
all the reasons it's brilliant and all the reasons I would worry for yeah. her watching. And if she says, do you think I should watch it? I'm going to have to say no. I would recommend it to young men, 100%. Yeah, I couldn't recommend it to my mom because I think it will be too upsetting for her, and I don't want to put yeah, my mom in that position. Well, you could tell her, you give her the like the what happens sort of in yeah. a, like you know in but a vague I, way, like if, I, you, if you, it's not a feel good. There's nothing. Romp. There's nothing about this film that makes you come away feel apart from the very end. I felt fucking yeah. good at the end when the police showed up. Yeah, but it's still but on the back to... of her death. Yeah, and I can't. I, I honestly, I think this is a brilliant film. I think it should have won more Oscars. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it demands to be watched again. Um, in some, in the same way that some films are. Like, yeah. I think that there are probably things that I would get about piecing together what happened. The yes. things we don't see because, like, even the age of them all isn't stated. Yeah, like, nobody says she was twenty three. No, when the two guys say we were kids. She sort of she rejects that narrative, but she doesn't say how untrue it is. Yeah, it's done through. It's done by the thirtieth birthday attention. and the seven years ago, and those are like far apart in the story. Yeah. So if we were drinking and we watched this, we watched this uh, Friday morning, Friday the thirtieth of April. Um, yeah. So I'm wide awake. I'm. I've yeah. had coffee. I'm focused and I'm paying attention because we're going to talk about it in a podcast. Yeah. If I was watching this like in the cinema, we've been out for dinner. I wouldn't necessarily pick up on all of those things, and I'd have been able to let off these guys more and believe not let them off probably no but, but believe they were believe kids. they were actually maybe 18 mm. as opposed to 23 still not no, no, but, you, but buying more into their narrative of events exactly. rather than the actual truth exactly because they can you can create a narrative about these events you can well, say the oh dean, they would yeah she, exactly it takes it takes for her She's, own daughter to be in peril yeah for her and to be like says, yes you're right like um was i going to ruin a yeah. young man's career yeah and she's like my friend's dead like, yeah. she doesn't say it but she's everything about this is communicating everything about this is communicating that you know the threat of ruining a young man who has committed a crime's career is worse than an actual girl who has been raped dying she can like she can be expected to carry it he can't. Exactly. He, um, she has to carry his choices. He shouldn't have to carry them. And it's, oh my gosh, this film is very difficult for me. Well, we never have to watch it again. Yeah, no, but I I would recommend people watch it. I'm saying I wouldn't recommend it because it's too harrowing. But I would recommend people watch it because I think it prompts conversations that need to be had. Yeah, the Ryans need to think about it. The, yeah. uh, the, the Almond Rose probably won't. I agree. But the um, Ryans who excuse it, enable it, step away from it in their brains need to also, look at themselves. The 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 thing is, if you get a group of say four or five guys and they're all in the room like this is okay, like they're maybe looking at each other because they're all young and they're thinking, Is should we stop this? Like should I should but I all, but none of all, them are so, so do you know what I mean? There's that yeah. kind of a lot of people like we are not particularly um heard creatures have you noticed that do you know what i mean <laughs> yes i, I do um, know <laughs> we are very individual in our um we are counterculture in a lot of ways right so it's easier for us as creatures in the world to our, imagine ourselves yeah. in a room like that where i'd go this is a fucking disgrace like yeah because our we aren't college kids i wouldn't think we it was okay just because everybody else thought it was okay yeah and I'm not saying like, oh, what a great guy. No, I'm no, saying, I'm a nice guy. But the I, I know for a fact that I would have not have been okay. No, um, and the thing is, I also know that I wouldn't have done a Madison and because I haven't. When people have come to me and told me things, yes, I know for a fact that that's not yeah. how I would respond. Yeah. But then, as you say, we aren't necessarily people who thrive in that kind of environment. No, so we don't put ourselves in that kind of environment. I wasn't. I didn't go to university. No, because I. I didn't like that kind of right. environment it it wasn't comfortable for me in any way yeah so i haven't sort <laughs> of been trained to thrive well, in a culture yeah which would which feed would, yeah, into exactly. that so the um the point i was making about you get the five guys together if they don't have a female friend and this is quite normal for sexes to to um congregate together yeah, friend yeah, yeah. Like, I had a lot of friends who were girls at school um, and it probably shows right yeah um, if you're a young guy and you don't have a lot of friends who are girls which is fine 
Yeah. It's not it's, a, rec- a prerequisite for being a good person no, to have friends of, of the opposite it's sex. Not. Of course it's not. If you get those guys together when they're forming their moral compasses, because it really ain't Anastasia, right? It's what can we get away with? Then they can enable each other to become worse. But if they watch this and I honestly thought about it, when they're like 16, 17 years old, yeah. They get that female perspective and they won't be able to allow themselves to think of women as objects. Yeah. Because this story is the the women aren't. Like women get presented as objects to men so much. Yeah. That you can if you're young, you can buy into it because especially as at that age, your body is desperate. And you're being shown for, porn and and but models. But even without, even and, without that, like when you're a teenage boy and the girls start developing around you, you go mad. You're like <laughs> Like, this is crazy. Like, it's insane how much a young guy, or a young boy, really, a teenage boy, yeah. is f- sort of overcome with desire, which, like, by its definition, objectifies mm. the female body because the female body is where the pleasure can be taken, mm. right? And so you need female perspectives yeah, um, to, to prevent that sort of so illness of you, the mind. So do you which, think... Because we obviously, I have a stepson. You're, you have an actual. Yes, stepson. I will make him. I'll. I'll not I'll now. Want him, not now. He's, he's eight. eight years old. <laughs> but when he's sixteen, yeah. Well, I've I've already got a plan to watch a bunch of movies with him, and this is going in the mm. in the rotation because yeah, um, especially see, if wonder, he doesn't have friends who are girls. Because, would I? Would I want our girls to watch that? Yeah, I probably would because I would want them to see that this isn't right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you might have people like Madison. You don't want to be Madison in this in And this telling scenario. you yeah. that... And she's 23 as well. Yeah. Like they're you all don't the want same to, age. You don't want to be either Madison yourself or think that if you go to a friend and she responds like Madison, yeah, that she's that right. she's right to do you that. You want to, you know, you want to know that if you this happens to you... want to hold your friends to, you, to higher standards yeah. than that, yeah. If you if this happens to you, which, you know, let's be honest, it might because this is the world we live in. Yeah. You've don't go to uni. <laughs> or, or do do pursue education, but yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. I would want them to know that it's not the right thing to happen to them, and it's okay to come and tell someone and expect something to be done. Yeah, and it's okay to be angry that that men get to get drunk and be vulnerable, and nothing bad happens to them ever, 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 yeah. ever. Maybe once every fucking five years. Then, as yeah. opposed to like as she says, once a week, m- multiple times a week, stuff like this was happening in the university. Mm. The dean said. Yeah, um, and she says every week she goes out and tries it, and every single week yeah, it happens. Yeah, every week it happens. There's never, yeah. a, there's never a failure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, God, that's. <laughs> I mean, basically, you recommend it with a trigger warning. I think young men should watch it. Yeah. Um, and start thinking about women as human beings. <laughs> Is that the right way to put it? I guess. Because I, I mean, think I it's... get the hesitation because it's like obviously they're human beings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Um, but God, I do. It's a, it's a film and a half, though, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know mm. if I was emotionally prepared. I don't think I was. I knew that it was a sort of... Rape, revenge, fantasy Yeah, story. I mean, I don't know if I knew how... I, I didn't go in with a lot of knowledge. So, I've been watching, as you are familiar... Again. <laughs> the Sopranos. Again. <laughs> um, so I watched that on Sky. I watch it on Sky Go on my phone while I'm washing yeah. the dishes, right? And before every episode, there's an advert. Right. So because this was made by, or this was, I think, funded by Sky. Right. Um, they've been so advertising been this seeing... film to me. And it's the speech that she says to, to Al Monroe about um, when he says, like, being accused like that is every guy's, every guy's worst, worst, fun, nightmare. worst nightmare. And she says, do you want to know what every woman's worst nightmare is? Which is a great line for the trailer. Yeah. Um, and she does the, she tells the story every week I go to a bar. and So you get the idea of what the concept is yeah. and what it's roughly about, but none of the plot. Yeah, I um, think I expected it to be more of a bloody vengeance mission. Right. Um, from what little I've seen. I've yeah. tried, because I knew we were going to do this, I've tried to not, yeah, I don't same. like I don't like trailers. I don't no, like they give spoilers. Too much away, yeah. yeah, so I try to avoid. But kudos to the trailer because it didn't give too yeah. much away. Um, it did make me curious as to what it was. I yeah. didn't have any idea really when we sat down to watch what to expect. Yeah, I feel um, broken and drained <laughs> and like I need a drink. Well, we can have a drink. <laughs> I'm just completely like Lord above. I am. So, I am having emotions. <laughs> what are we gonna watch? Next time we do a film review. Well, you were going to try and um, do a uh, woman Luke next week. Yes, I will try. But what if you can't? Like, what are we mm. going to... I think... I don't want to watch something we've seen before. I agree. But 
I think something that is a little more light. Just less stressful because my honestly, my chest hurts. Yeah, that's that. That's it. So we'll find something. Normally, we're talking about sort of very colourful superheroes flying around yeah. and punching each other. So, if you want to hear us talk about superheroes, um, because there's a good chance that if you're listening to this, you've, you've not heard you've come me. for the promising young woman yeah, conversation. Yeah, I agree. And normally, yeah, we've been talking about one division, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Nectar's Loki. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so if you want to know more about us, and we've talked a bit about our work and who we are, um, if you go to the website sirenstories.co.uk, all the links and everything are in the description for this podcast. And you might see it on YouTube or your podcast streaming platforms. I don't know which one you're going to, but it'll be on both. Um, you can come and find us on social media. All our links and everything are over there. Um yeah, come chat to us. Tell us what you think of this movie. You'll also mm. find links over there to all our work and our own individual websites, etc., etc. Um, what did you think of this movie? I'm curious because I'm, yeah, like I say, I feel completely emotionally just, I feel like I have been taken out, wrung dry, iron flat, steamrolled, and then put on the sofa to just sort of... To talk about it. Like, I'm just, I can't even, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. I feel completely battered um but yeah i'm curious we want to know what you think and you can come and chat and yeah we will be back with another film review next week it'll either be me and john or it'll be john and luke mm -hmm. um and then we'll be doing loki when that starts up yeah i think it's a couple June. of weeks away i think it's the entire month of may we got away oh wait, is it so. really oh i thought it was a couple of like three weeks no, after i think it's a bit longer but Oof. there's the nevers coming and we could talk about that but then we'll be behind america so yeah. i don't know if it's worth doing well, 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 well keep doing one a week generally we yeah. might skip in a week occasionally if we can't for whatever reason but ben generally it's one a week ben and generally i i just get confused i just got ben and jerry in my head now <laughs> so thank you very much for listening and yeah we'll be back soon all right bye bye